you got to take a step back here and show the grace that you said you wanted to show. The uh, president wasn't toppled by party bosses. He was toppled by the reality of his situation. It was the American people who made a judgment. Uh, it was helped along by your party for five years. But <laughs> they, 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 they made a judgment, and he recognized the judgment they made, and he decided that the, that the, the stakes in this fight are such that he could better advance the cause that he believed in by stepping aside. Hey guys, my name is Gabori Darkness. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be responding to Scott Jennings, who's on CNN, just providing what the facts are when it comes to President Biden and the uh, exit speech that he really stumbled through, in my opinion. And, and, and I just find it so funny how Two weeks ago, the media, including CNN, were reporting on the defiance and the unwillingness for President Biden to drop out of the race. They even reported that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and President Obama was trying to get him out of there. And then just what happened last night when the speech concluded and they reacted to it. They sounded as if none of that stuff actually happened and, and that he was just doing the right thing all of a sudden. So anyway, Scott Jennings, he, he as always, um, provides common sense, shuts this whole crew down, and they really just kind of give them that, that deer in the headlight look because it makes too much sense, right? So before we get into all that, you guys know what to do, like, share, and subscribe. Let's go ahead and play that video. Scott? It's a... Uh odd to me that just a few weeks ago, heck, a few days ago, uh, most Democrats were still looking into television cameras and saying that this person is up to another four years. I mean, he's obviously running on fumes. They weren't cheap folks, no matter what the government told you. Um, in fact, I still think it's a legitimate scandal how they ever arrived at the decision to run again in the first place. I still... Yeah, I have to stop it because... You know, I think it, it, it just shows you the media and how they can just do a complete 180 on their reporting and their reaction to what's going on. And he's dead on about this. Media outlets and the White House and the Democrats all were just surprised that when the debate came around, that President Biden was in that condition. So then they had no choice but to comment on it at that point. Before, they refused to entertain or comment anything that had any relation to the idea that President Biden, his mental decline was a real thing. Uh, they would not concede to that. But when the whole world saw his performance on the debate stage, they had no choice but to comment. Now, of course, fast forward, Vice President Harris is the presumptive nominee. They act like it never even happened. And so Scott Jennings is on here reminding them what just happened because they it's like they get amnesia, right? And how it, it just all took place. And in some respects, you can look at it as a scandal. I think his family and his top staff have a lot of explaining to do. Um, most of this seemed like a stump speech to me. It seemed like he gave the speech that he always wanted the campaign to be about, which was he wants credit for this record that he thinks is historic and was not getting out of the campaign. That's something I want to add to. I was thinking about this earlier today because they have been pushing this idea that President Biden is one of the most, if not the best president in the history of all presidents. Uh, he, they definitely are pushing that idea that the legislation he's passed is historic and no one's ever, uh, you know, has come close and his whole legacy is unmatched um, in reference or in comparison to presidents that had served two terms. Um, so listen, let's be realistic here. OK. Saying all that is just really gaslighting the American people. Because when I served in the military, I tell this story all the time about leadership. There's only two types of commanders when you're in the military. There is the commander who's driven by politics and numbers. 
And then there's the commander that's driven by his soldiers. And what that means is the commander that's driven by politics and numbers, they only care what's on paper. Right. They don't. It, it doesn't mean what's on paper is reality. So on paper, but in the real life of everyday Americans, has it made a difference? No. Let's continue. I'm still shocked, by the way, at how uh, easy it is to overthrow the president. I mean, I think of this office. I think we all think of this office as being impenetrable. He got 81 million votes in 2020 and then he got 14 million more. But at the end of the day, he was no match for a handful of party bosses who run the Democratic Party. So, I, look, I'm, I'm ha happy to give him all the all the grace that he deserves because he's on his way out. But at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, it really sounds like that. <laughs> yeah, but see, they it's funny the faces they make when they reported on what he just said. It was just two weeks ago they said, yeah, Nancy Pelosi has given President Biden an ultimatum. Either do it the easy way or the hard way. Like all, and then part of the Democrat Party came out publicly and told him to drop out. But when he brings it up, they 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 give us the you know my stomach I'm sick face right? It's it's crazy. Yeah, people, that's coming of, next. A bunch of people looked into TV cameras over the last days, weeks, and months, and told you a lot of things, a lot of things that were not true about this president. I hope he is okay for the next few months, but uh, it was obvious it was time, not tonight, but a while ago. Yeah, obviously I don't wish any ill will on the president or any of the Democrats. That's just not who I am. That's not my mindset. I don't have time to, to let those people live rent free in my mind, but I will call it what it is. We will talk about the facts. We will say what really matters. And what matters is, is that the media has been complicit and lying to the American people. You see, and, and here's why. Here's why this is so true. They spend more time criticizing, right, President Trump and his supporters, 24-7, 365. No shortage of articles, clips, fat checkers, people who want to debate him when they're only supposed to interview him. Like, there's no shortage of that. But there's absolutely a shortage of the media challenging President Biden, fact checking President Biden, fact checking his supporters. You can't find anything on the internet with that. And you know why? It's because it's all skewed, right? Uh, the media is absolutely left leaning, and they are going to support the Democrat Party before they ever support the Republican Party. Now, you make of that whatever you want, but when that is a fact, this is why Scott Jennings, you know, on CNN is like, why is he on there? I'm I'm glad he's on there because he he's 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 like the only guy there with some level of common sense to push back on these emotional and and these statements that are really just propaganda for the Democrat party. He's that guy opposing all of that stuff. And every time he does, usually they get sick. Let's keep going. What about promoting democracy, passing the baton to the next generation of leadership, the nation being bigger than any one man in your ambitions is divisive. That may be more of a reflection of the leader that the Republican Party has chosen to follow. I don't think George Bush, your boss, would have found that to be a deeply divisive speech. How do you say I, I love you too, David. And... Um, uh, I really do, and I respect you, and I, and I hear what you're saying. I think what you're asking Republicans to do is to overlook a lot, a lot of dishonesty that came right out of this White House, that came right out of the Vice President, people who work for him, his family, other Democrats, Democrats in Congress. You're asking uh, the country to overlook a lot of dishonesty about Joe Biden's abilities, capabilities, his capacity to serve for another four years, and so on. Are you talking about How Biden you, or Trump? I'm talking I mean, about... I'm, I'm talking literally, about, Democrats make the same argument. I'm about talking Trump. about Joe Biden. He arrived right. at this... I, he, he, he did arrive at this decision with a little push, not just from the goodness of his own heart, but, but you have to admit. Well, I a, said, little, I said a little he, bit of a push. He, he a little bit of a push from the party boss. That you see that? You, you see how they, they won't even go back to it. They can't even acknowledge 
that he was forced to do this. They, they can't because they've already received their talking points from the Democrat Party. Like if you for one second really believe that CNN or MSNBC is really going to be unbiased and neutral when they go out there and speak about President Biden, you you absolutely are naive. There's no question about it. Because what Scott Jennings is saying, what Scott Jennings is saying is that there's no bias in there. That's facts. He was pushed out. He was pushed out. I mean, how many times do we have to go back and play the clips where it shows Democrats calling for him to drop out of the race? That is pressure. That is them trying to push out. And these Democrats do not just step out of line. They do not take it upon themselves and and put out a, a, a statement like that unless they are having, unless they are getting that from the top. But David Axelrod here, he's acting like it never even happened. Us as we're reflecting, you know, the consensus of the American people who made a judgment. But mm. Scott, I mean, I there's so many Republicans who I talk to who are overlooking far more than this. And they'll tell you that uh, about Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, that that is really this, almost the story of the Republican Party right now. Uh, you know, I t said to you last week, the fact that the man you work for and who you revere and who you love was booed at the Republican convention last week after devoting his entire life to the Republican Party reflects how totally how totally this party is in the thrall of a guy who is morally and ethically challenged and who left the presidency. You talk about deposing a president. That's exactly what he tried to do. Overturn a free and fair election. So and a lot of yeah, it's the same old talking points. You know, it'd be one thing if President Trump assembled uh, National Guard troops and had them march down to where they were certifying the election and had them barge in there and assassinate people, including uh, Vice President Pence. You know, that, that would be one thing. Um, it is under which the Supreme Court has already ruled on this, it was within his authority to call uh, Secretary of States and challenge the election. That's within his authority to do so. That doesn't mean they're going to do it. It's not like he sent the Secret Service to the Secretary of State, put a gun to their head and say, hey, you will overturn the election. So what the, the problem is, is that the media, they, they're so deranged, they hate Trump so much that they will never be unbiased or neutral on anything. It does not matter if what they're saying is 100% false. And so instead of, they, instead of them just sticking to President Biden and where he went wrong and just being truthful on that, they want to always go back and bring up the guy they hate the most, which is President Trump. Republicans know that. They've said it. And yet they're setting that aside. So I don't think you're on a, you're not on a strong footing here in making this argument. Well, but my argument is simply that when you're trying to make a judgment between two parties here, I fully and freely admit that both parties have warts. But we're acting like there's no warts on this situation. This is weird. Mm. He won the primary without a serious challenge. He told us all he could serve. His party told us he could serve. And he's clearly diminished. And I think he ultimately arrived in the right spot. As you know, on the night of the debate, I said, this candidacy has fallen. He ultimately got here, but it was pretty torturous how they got here. And I think a lot of people burned a lot of credibility on the road to getting here. And again, that's what they do. So they're going to go back to the guy they hate and, and bring it up instead of just saying, yeah, you're right. Both sides, we do have problems. That's absolutely correct. Uh, what we had to go through with President Biden was absolutely torturous. That is correct. They just bypass everything that he says because they can't stand agreeing with anything that, that has Trump name on it. Right. They just can't. And, and anything that has common sense involved, they can't handle that either. It is common sense. It is a fact. President Biden did not want to drop out of the race. He was forced out. Let's just call it what it is. Two things could be true at the same time. OK, it is true that he was forced out and it is true that he finally gave up. I don't, I don't understand why we can't be 
unbiased here. It's just facts. Yeah, so you guys seen that. Scott Jennings, once again, providing some level of common sense to these propaganda puppets uh, from the Democrat Party that serve on CNN. Um, and I wish we had more people like this, even on just both sides. You know, I don't mind hearing Democrats speak if they just exercise some common sense. Like if a Democrat just came out and said, you know what? Yeah, our border policy is it doesn't work. I, I want to do this, you know, like, but they won't even say that, right? Yeah, it is true. Uh, groceries are higher. More, more, like if they said grocery prices, gas prices, and cost of living is higher, and even though they, we, we have stated that the economy is looking good, we do see that people are still struggling. They can't say that. All they say is the economy is great, but they don't acknowledge what everyday Americans are feeling and going through. And I really believe that's going to backfire on them. So I love Scott Jennings for, for what he's doing on CNN. Uh, thank God there are still people in the media that have some level of common sense. Um, I really believe organizations like CNN and Fox News and ABC and all of them, they're, they're just a dying industry overall. It, it really is. More people like myself and other people out there that are speaking on this stuff I think we actually provide more common sense than they do because we're not paid to say what we're saying, right? I don't have some connection to Nancy Pelosi where she controls my life and has leverage over me, right? I'm just going to use common sense. I'm going to report what the facts are and go from there, right? So, hey, that is my mindset about this. What is yours? What do you think about Scott Jennings going on there and really just giving it to these people on the CNN panel? Yes, they're sick every time he says what the facts are. Yes, they absolutely hate uh, President Trump's guts. And yes, they now have amnesia about President Biden and what took place over the past three to four weeks. I want to hear from you and more. Leave it all in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today, and I'll see you in the next one.